Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. This past June 9th, 2021, Wallbox, which is a leading provider in Europe of electric vehicle charging solutions and that we will of course analyze in more detail in today's video, announced that they would be going public in the New York Stock Exchange under their ticker symbol WBX. And this is expected to take place during the third quarter of this year. However, they are not planning on going public through a traditional IPO, but they will be doing this merging with a SPAC, so a special purpose acquisition company. And in this case, they selected the company of Kensington Capital Acquisition Corp, which is already trading in the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol KCAC. Nevertheless, before I go into the details of the transaction, let me quickly give you an overview of the topics that I will be covering in today's video. So first of all, I will start with a general introduction to Wallbox and we will also look of course at the industry and analyze a little bit its competitors. After this, we will look into the details as we were commenting of the merger and we will also look at the valuation that Wallbox will start trading at. Well, basically, if you were now to purchase shares of this company, this is pack that they will merge with and of course we will compare as well the valuation of a wall box to that of two other competitors which in this case I selected Blink and Chargepoint which are also publicly traded and not only we will be comparing the current valuations but we will also be doing price projections in four years time and also comparing these different companies and finally as always after all of this I will be giving my personal opinion on the company and also my future plans with it. With that said though, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed the video, it would be super awesome if you could give it a like because these videos really take a very long time to research and put all the information together and everything. And also please consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of content of me analyzing different companies, IPOs and so on. But with all of this said, let's go for it. First of all, I want to mention that at the moment of making this video, there is still not that much information available on the company of Wallbox. So if you are used to other videos that I publish on IPOs, this one will be a bit different. And secondly, part of why I'm so excited about this company is because this one is a Spanish one that was actually founded in 2015 in Barcelona, which is the city I was born in. Nevertheless, continuing on some more general information, as already previously mentioned, Wallbox creates, manufactures and sells different EV charging systems and for it they currently employ more than 500 employees across 9 offices in 3 different continents and also 3 different manufacturing facilities, 2 of them are currently in Barcelona and 1 in China, although there are plans to build another one in the US by 2022. But now let's talk a bit more about the products that they sell. And on this, we have that they offer chargers for homes, businesses, and also for public spaces. Although the ones for public spaces, which is the Supernova charger, won't begin its distribution until the end of 2021. However, something to highlight and the main competitive advantage that they currently have versus their competitors is their bidirectional charger called Quasar, which I'm sure that I pronounced wrong. To explain this in a very simplified way, we generally have that EV chargers just go in one way, which is usually from the grid or the solar panels or whichever other source of energy into the car to charge the battery. But in the case of bidirectional ones, it goes both ways. So you can either charge the car or, de or decharge the car uh, to power other things, which would mean that your car is not only a car that can allow you to drive, but it's also a storage of energy that then you can use to power other things things and these other things this is usually applied at home so for instance a very smart move could be to charge the car at night or of course with the solar panels if you have them but imagining that you don't have them a very smart move would be to charge the car at night because usually the electricity is much cheaper than during the, than during the day and then once the car is fully charged if it also stays during the day at home or at least during some hours you use it as a source of energy to power all the other utilities. So if you put a washing machine, a dishwasher or whatever other thing, and of course the electricity that you have paid to, to store in your car has been at a much lower price than what you would pay if you would use it throughout the day, that usually it's more expensive. 
Another example of how this could be applied is if, for instance, if you have solar panels at your home and during the day maybe they produce excess of electricity because you are using maybe some lights but they produce much more than you are able to use at that time and instead of selling that excess of electricity to the grid because usually at least in Spain they pay very little money for the electricity that you sell in comparison to how much you have to pay when you have to buy it from the, from the grid. So instead of doing that you could just transfer it directly to the car of course only if you have the car there and then maybe at night when the solar panels are no longer uh, working you can use that electricity from the car to power the rest of your home and then a final example just to leave it super clear is when for instance there's a power outage so the electricity just goes out sometimes it happens when there's a snowstorm or other extreme events you could technically also use your car in case of course there is still battery inside to power the rest of your home and maybe be able to survive with it for a couple of days well i hope that with these examples the concept is clear which is essentially that you can use your car as a battery to also power your home if there is need for it which i think that is super practical and for instance you could even substitute the power wall of tesla which is just a battery to store energy at your home or from other providers like for instance enphase Next, in terms of products, besides the actual chargers, they also offer software solutions to manage the chargers that they have on one app called Electromaps, which Wallbox owns 51% and has the possibility to increase to 100% ownership. And this one operates in Southern Europe and allows you to find EV chargers and pay these directly using the app. And currently they have 150,000 charge points and more than 100,000 users. And from this app, Wallbox makes a 10% fee for each transaction. At this point, let's touch on three more aspects before we go into the numbers of the merger and the valuation of Wallbox. And the first of these is regarding the leadership team at Wallbox. Because one of the co-founders actually used to work at Tesla and there are other several of the management team members having worked in large and successful companies like Microsoft, Google, NASA and Fujitsu. Afterwards, looking at the industry numbers, as we all hear nonstop lately, electric vehicles are becoming very trendy and getting more and more extended worldwide. What started only with Tesla has now transformed into most of traditional or more well-established manufacturers like Volkswagen, GM or Ford, following the path to only producing electric cars in a few years time. And the projections in the screen show that we are still at early stages of electric vehicles as these should increase massively over the coming years. And of course, with an increase in electric vehicles, there will also be an increase in the number of charge points installed, because the current gas stations will eventually be replaced by EV charging stations. And not only on the road, but also at home and at work, people will need EV chargers, which offers a massive opportunity for companies like Wallbox. And actually, Wallbox thinks that still more than 97% of the charge point installations are ahead to come. The last point before going into the topic of the merger are the competitors. Because Wallbox mentions that a key aspect is to be one of the first to enter this market and to be able to expand very quickly. But which other players are there already in this market? Well, essentially there are three other main publicly traded companies, but of course there are others. And these three main ones are Blink, Chargepoint and Tesla. And at this point, I will stop the part of the competitors. We will come back to it later after we go through the numbers of the merger. The slide on the screen shows pretty well the details of the merger. And to keep it simple, we will just go into what is interesting for us if we want to become shareholders of Wallbox, which are the shirts outstanding after the offering and the price of this. The share price of the SPAC of Kensington is currently of $10 per share. And after the merger, it is projected that there will be a total of 178.8 million shares, valuing the company at $1.7 billion. But actually, as you can see in the graph, the total shares that Kensington will make available to the public markets will be of around 16.1% of the total outstanding. Looking at this, of course, we have already the general valuation of the company, which was at $1.7 billion. But to use another more tangible metric for me, I calculated the price to sales ratio and I did so with the sales of 2020, since the company is, of course, still reporting losses and at very early stages. And doing this, as you can see in the screen, we have that its price to sales ratio is of 75.4 times sales. 
and this, this ratio is crazy expensive. But since we are already six months into 2021, let's take the projected sales that they will have for this year 2021 and calculate the forward price to sales ratio. And doing this, since they are expecting to increase sales by 230% this year, so in 2021, we have that its forward price to sales ratio decreases to 22.63%, which is still very expensive, but not as crazy. Now that we have discussed the revenue projections, they are actually expecting to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 90% until 2027 and make 2.1 billion by then. And if we check its competitors until, until 2025, these have lower growth projected rates. We see that Blink is expected to follow closely Wallbox with 84.2%, followed by Chargepoint at 63.2%, and finally Tesla at 23% compound annual growth rate. On this, commenting shortly on the different competitors, we have that Wallbox is the only one offering this bidirectional charger, and the rest are mostly offering sim similar chargers to the ones of Wallbox, of course, excluding the ones of Tesla because they have just a different model of charger. And then we have ChargePoint or Blink that are maybe more focused on building a very large network of different charging stations worldwide and also operating these charging stations. And then focusing just on Tesla, we know that its main business is on selling cars. And of course, with the cars, they also sell uh, chargers and they also have the supercharger stations, which by the way, these supercharging stations can also only be used by Teslas and not by other vehicles. There is also no possibility to use an adapter. Uh, but with other AC chargers from Tesla, other EV vehicles with an adapter, really can use those ones. But to me, Tesla is less of a competitor to Wallbox because they are building their own network just with Teslas and it's already pretty well established. But what Wallbox, for instance, ChargePoint or Blink are basically building the network of for all the other electric vehicles that are non-Tesla. Now comparing the revenues with Blink and ChargePoint, which in my eyes, these are the two most direct competitors to Wallbox. We see that Wallbox in terms of revenues is larger in size than Blink, although Blink is also growing very strongly. And then ChargePoint is much larger than the other two, but has experienced a very significant growth in its revenue since last year. Finally, going into the valuation to compare the three, we have that looking at the current price to sales ratio based on the 2020 sales, Blink is trading extremely expensive at a price to sales ratio of 266 times sales. And ChargePoint, despite its very modest growth at 59 times sales, which is also crazy. And then, as we commented earlier on, we have Wallbox at 74 times sales. Now though, before I give my opinion, I would like to go back to the slide in which we could see the projected compound annual growth rates for the different competitors until 2025 and do the price projection for these three companies based on the sales that they should have by 2025 if these projected growth rates really end up being true. Doing that, we have that Wallbox in 2025 should be making revenues of almost $700 million, then Blink would be at $132 million, and finally ChargePoint would be at $1.7 billion. And now for the price projection, I assume that they would trade in five years time or in 2025 at a price to sales ratio of 20, which don't get me wrong, it is still crazy expensive, but at much lower levels than what all of these companies are trading at the moment, which is absolutely crazy, a bit too much hype in my opinion. But anyways, doing that, we have that the expected price for Wallbox would be of $77.85 per share, the one of Blink at $62.94 per share and charge point at $110.95 per share. And if it turns out to be true, we would almost 8x our money in Wallbox, in Blink we would not even double our money, and then in charge point we would 4x our money. With all of these numbers and valuations, as I already mentioned, it is pretty clear that all of them are trading crazy expensive. But if I had to choose one of them, I think that I would stay with Wallbox because although it's trading expensive like all of them, it has more upside potential or more growth potential ahead of it, at least based on the estimations that we looked at in terms of compound annual growth rate because of course we need to end up seeing how this translates into reality or not. And then of course the least interesting one, at least in my opinion is Blink because it is crazy overpriced and even if it has very nice revenue projections 
the current valuation is just too crazy. Now though, before I end, I have one last price projection and I promise that this one is the last one because here in the previous example, we were just using the compound annual growth rate and just do you doing that one and the same one for every year. But actually, Wallbox is expected to grow much more at more than 200% during the next three years to come or at least in the next year 200 and then the following 100 and so on. Um, so based on what they mentioned, they expect revenues in 2025 to be already of one point. 173 billion dollars well previously in the just example that or in the estimations that we just mentioned now we had forecasted 695 million and if what they mentioned really ends up being true this would mean that the price per share of Wallbox in 2025 would be uh, using the same price to sales ratio of 20 of 131.21 dollars per share which would mean a 13x of your money with this last calculation, it is time now for my personal thoughts on the company. And I think that I have already expressed several of them throughout the video, but I essentially very much like the industry of the EV chargers and EV charging. And although there is a bit too much hype in my opinion, especially around stocks and maybe all of the stocks trading at the moment are a bit overvalued. Um, it is also true that the opportunity ahead of these companies is massive, especially if you believe that EVs will really take over and completely replace all internal combustion engine cars. Uh, because if this is the case, then as we said, the opportunity for EV chargers is also massive. Personally, since this is a company that I like, but that was also founded and is still based in Barcelona, so the region of Spain I'm precisely from, where I was born and raised, I will be investing in it because I feel like it's somehow a way to also support a local business from my area. And this though doesn't mean that I will be investing crazy amounts of money. Actually, to be very honest, I won't be investing more than $200 in it, maybe a bit more, but not at the moment, essentially because I feel like it's very, very speculative. They are still pre-revenue trading at crazy valuations. And of course, if the price projections that we mentioned turn out to be true, we could more than 10x our money maybe, but also the risk is very high if they are not able to deliver. So as I said, I will start with not more than $200 in total. And then of course, if I see that in a few years time, they continue to perform well and maybe the financials also improve, they have more revenues, maybe also more employees, the company is larger, then I might be investing more in it or adding more to my position, even if I'm mapping on it. But to begin with, I will not be investing more than that. Nevertheless, as always, please remember that I'm no financial advisor, that everything that I shared in this video are just my opinions, my personal thoughts, and also my own calculations, that they could of course be wrong. I take no responsibility for that, so that's why you should do your own research, your own calculations, and be responsible of your own choices when it comes to investing in this or any stock. With that said though, I will leave it for today because this is essentially the end of the video. What are your thoughts on Wallbox? Did you like the company? Do you think that there is future potential for it? And what about the valuation? And finally, will you be investing in Wallbox? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and as always, see you next time.